In this tutorial we're going to look at different ways of translating and transforming objects. So translating objects refers to moving and copying objects. So let's start by just creating a sphere and then we can move that sphere in any direction that we want. So um, first we'll just give it a radius so I'll just go 1 is less than 30.00 so we can see it a little bit better and then we can now move that sphere. So move is going to be located under transform and it's a Euclidean transformation so we can move it in from one point to another this will be the geometry we move and we then pick a vector for which to move so you could do a vector two point or any kind of vectors you can also move things along lines um, but in this case we'll just do a unit a unit Z and then plug in our direction um, to T and here we can just plug in the amount of movement into the Z um, direction. So we could also use an amplitude component if we wanted to. So either one would work. So that moves it in the Z direction. Maybe I'll use a slightly bigger um, slider for this. Okay. The other thing we can do is copy uh, geometry. Actually it automatically copies a geometry if we just move it once you can see there's the original geometry and then there's the copy it doesn't actually move the original sphere it just makes a copy but you could create a series of copies so there is a component called series and the series is looking for a step and a count so um, if we look at the step number we can just copy and paste one of the sliders that we already have um, and then the count is going to be the number of copies so I'll use an integer there let's say 2 is less than 30 and that will be the number of copies we can then use uh, let's move this in the X so unit X and then we can plug that into the move component you can see um, based on the size here the next thing we need is a start which starts at 0 and then we can increase the count. So as I increase the count it actually increases the number of copies um, along that direction, along the X direction. There is another component called linear array which does the same, same exact thing. So it actually takes the geometry, um, it asks for a direction of the geometry, so in this case we can say um, Z, and then it does the number of, of um, copies that you want to make. So you can plug in the number of copies there. So that's the other way to do a linear array um, or copying objects in a direction. The next thing we'll do is scale the geometry. So let's say I take um, the same sphere that we already have and type in scale. Um, you can find all of these under transform affine. So that's over here. And you have scale. You have non-uniform scales. So we can try that one too and then a bunch of other things like shearing of geometries and then we'll get into some of the projects later but to scale geometry you plug the geometry into G um, you then ask for the center of scaling so in this case we can find the centroid by using the area component of the sphere and that finds the centroids we'll use that for the scale and then factor is the amount of scaling so we can do let's do one is less than 2.00 so one would be just a hundred percent so the exact same scale if you increase it to two that would be twice as big so you can change the scale you can also go negative so if you want to do a smaller percentage you can do that as well with the non-uniform scale you can um, scale the X and Y values independently so we can use the same sphere we'll just use the centroid as the point I'll just go ahead and delete that one and now we can plug this value into X, this value into Y, and then also you have the Z value. So you can change the scale of the, the sphere, if I preview this off, in the X, Y, and Z direction. And that's true for any, any geometry that you want to scale non-uniformly. The last one I want to show is rotate. So that's again under transform Euclidean. So you can rotate a geometry. And so if we take the same geometry, the scale geometry, and plug it in here, 
um, we can actually rotate that geometry any number of degrees. So I'm just going to make a slider 0 less than 360 and if I plug that into angle you'll see it'll behave a little strangely and that's once again because um, it's looking for radians so you can right click on angle and change it to degrees and then it will behave more um, appropriate like what you would think it would behave like. So from 0 to 360 would be a full revolution of that rotation.